Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Moon, a pick and pass space based building kind of game for one to five players where you play as the leader of one of the first settlements on the moon. Expeditions are always coming up from Earth with plucky new pioneers ready to settle down on the best base on the moon. And as each expedition visits, you will decide who to settle into your base and what will be constructed next. Now, unfortunately, you can't stay on the moon for too long, but when the personnel returns to Earth, they will spread the word of your glorious settlement and rate everything from your scientific capability to your food and housing quarters. And if you can make your settlement the most popular, it could become the new capital of the moon. Before we get into the rules, let's have a look at the setup and see how we got to this point. To set up, pop the hearts, rovers, and resources into a general supply. And just to note, this is the deluxe edition, so things might be a little bit different in the standard. The resources in the game are energy, water, biomass, and metal. And on the other side of the tokens are threes if you've got loads. Find the flag reward board and put that in the middle of the table. I'm going to set up for two players here, so I'm going to just pop it off to the top there. And then we need to find a three value heart token to place in each of these spots and stack three heart tokens underneath the X on this space. And then find out the five four value tokens and the five five value tokens and stack them up next to the flag board. Next, we want the reputation cards. These say reputation card on the back and are in bronze, silver and gold stacks. Shuffle each of them up and then we want to make a display with as many cards in each level as there are players in the game. So if we were setting up a three player game, we would have three bronze, three silver, three gold, four player game, four of each. For a two player game, which is what I'm gonna set up as, you break that rule a bit and you put three of each out. Then find the structure cards. These come in three big stacks for era one, two, and three. Shuffle each of the stacks separately. Although if like me, you are setting up a two player game, you need to just go through the decks first and remove any cards with this three plus in the middle left of the card. There are six in the era one deck and four in the era two deck. If you are mostly gonna be playing with just two players, you could actually put all of the three plus cards with the unused cards divider in the box. And then you don't have to do that every game. Once they're all shuffled up, put them in stacks where everyone can reach and put one card from the era one deck next to the flag reward card face up. This is the start of the discard pile. Ours happens to have a toilet in it. Find the five base cards and each player is gonna need one of these. Again, if you are playing with two players, one of the bases has a three plus in the corner and needs to be removed. Each player should also get a player aid and two rovers from the supply. Might need a little bit more space per player than I'm giving them here. I'm squashing things together a bit for the camera. Give a first expedition card to the player with the loudest voice. And that is clearly Marty. Depending on your player count, one is for a four plus play game, one is for a two to three play game. So I would give Marty this first expedition card with the two to three on it. And then shuffle up the era one, two and three expedition cards. Getting ready to place those in stacks. Again, there are cards with three pluses on them that need to be removed if you're playing with two players. And with that, we are ready to start playing. Now let's look at how to play. So Moon is played in three rounds that are called eras which represent the first 100 years of populating the moon. In each era, we will expand our settlements on the moon using new cards with different properties and abilities. The aim of the game is to earn as many hearts as possible. Hearts represent popularity, and getting the most popularity means that your base will be chosen as the capital of the moon. Every era has three phases that we do in order. The production phase is where we'll produce resources, rovers and hearts from our settlements based on things that we have built there. The construction phase, we pick cards from our hand to build or assimilate and then pass our hands to the next player, repeating that until our hands are empty. And the construction phase is also where you can do extra actions to do with your expedition cards and rovers. And finally, the scoring phase, where players claim the hearts that are on the flag board and score any hearts based on their structures and reputation cards. So first of all, in the production phase, all players claim the resources and other items that are on production symbols in their settlement. Production symbols have got these white curved arrows on them. Everybody gets one on their base card, and they're also included on structures that we can build during the game. So in the very first production phase of the game, you will produce one thing, the thing that is on your base. So here I would produce a biomass, grab it from the general supply and put it into my supply. 
apply. In future production phases though, as we build new structures, we might produce more things like different kinds of resources. There are even production cards that can produce more than one resource in one go. You might produce more rovers or even hearts, grabbing the relevant thing from the supply. An extra bonus for building these, which we'll cover in a minute, is that you get the rewards straight away as well as in future production phases. Then we have the construction phase. Here's where we will take turns using cards from our hands to build or assimilate and do some extra actions. So if you're in the beginning of era two or three at this point, take the top card from the relevant deck and make a new discard pile out of it. See, we did that in setup for era ones. Then each player needs a hand of cards from the current era structure deck. We're in era one, so they would come from the era one structure deck. In a two player game, that's eight cards each. If we were playing three to four players, it would be seven cards. And a five player game, that's six cards each. Then each player, apart from the player who has the first expedition card, needs an expedition card from the current era's deck. So since Marty has the first expedition card, I need a card from the era one's expedition deck. So now the cards we have represent the expedition that has left Earth and come to visit us on the moon. So everyone's now ready to take a turn. On a turn, you need to either build or assimilate one of the structure cards from your hand. There are also some optional actions that you can do. Use the bonus on your expedition card, park a rover, claim a reputation card from the display, or flip over a pink action card. So let's have a look at a structure card. This is one from the Era 2 deck just because it's got more icons on it to show you. The card might have a cost on it, which needs to be paid to construct that card. Some will have a flag requirement. You must already have the depicted flags in your settlement to be allowed to build that card. So the Robinson base here gives Marty the house flag card. He hasn't got the requirements yet to build this diner, but later on could get cards that give him that requirement. Or maybe he can get it from someone else. But there are stretch cards that you can build that will provide you with more flags. As we've seen in the production phase, some cards give you production symbols. And remember, as soon as you build these structure cards, you get the reward at that point, as well as in every future production phase. There is an assimilation reward over here. This is the reward you'll get if you choose to assimilate the card. And there is a rover parking space. Other players can park their rover here to get what the production symbols on the card produce or use the flags on it to fulfill a requirement they have when they're building. We'll talk about that in the rover section though. There are also some cards that refer to X. This is the excitement value and it's equal to the number of hearts that are placed under the X on the flag rewards board. Remember at the start of the game, we put three hearts on there. So X is three in era one, but it will reduce by one every era. So in era two, X is worth two. In era three, X is only worth one. Let's look at the types of cards. So we've seen that blue cards stack here and always give you production symbols. Yellow cards always have flags on them and are stacked in the yellow area of your base. So you can see all of the flags at the bottom of the cards. Pink cards are placed next to your base on their own and they give you an ability that you can use once per era by flipping them that we'll get to in the bonus action section. Gray cards are also placed next to your base and these will give you hearts for satisfying their conditions. So there are two different kinds. There are ongoing ones that remain active for the whole game after you've built them. And it actually tells us on the text what it does. This gets as many hearts on it as you have food flags. So when you gain more food flags, you get more hearts on this card. There are also end of game gray cards that will give you points at the end of the game. Six hearts for every full set of flags for this one in particular. And finally, we have red cards that have completely unique rules on them. And unless the card says otherwise, they are put next to your base with your pink or your gray cards. They always say what they do on them as well as having icons. So if you are new to that particular card, you can refer to the text that's on there. And there are also clarifications for cards in the rulebook. So if you had constructed this obelisk on a future turn, you could build an extra card and then put the obelisk back in your hand. So potentially giving another player the opportunity to build it. So if you choose to build, you take a structure card from your hand and place it in your settlement. Blue structure cards can stack up here. Yellow structure cards can stack up here because once they have been placed, you only need to see what they do on the bottom. So this ice vapor here has no cost, has no requirements. It's placed here. Remember when you build a production card, you get that resource straight away. So Marty would get that water and that would be constructed now. Your other option is to assimilate. 
So if you want to assimilate, you discard the card from your hand and gain the assimilation reward that's printed on it. So I could get rid of this hacker space card to get a water, because maybe I really want that for the building requirements of another card. And remember, there are optional actions that we can choose to do as well. You can do these before or after your mandatory action. So on your turn, you must build or assimilate. So you can use the bonus action that's on your expedition card. The first expedition card is always going to be the same based on your player count. And so the bonus action is you can discard a card, so one of the ones from your current hand, and replace it with the top card of the current era's deck, potentially giving you a new option. I'd also have a bonus action, which is gain a resource of your choice. There are other ones, though, that give you a special rule, which let you bend the rules of the game. So if you had the gearhead expedition, if you park a rover, also score a heart. The special rules are mandatory rather than being things that are triggered when you choose. If you do the thing on it, you must gain the result. So if I parked a rover, I would have to gain a heart. But, you know, you're gaining points. An important note, when you use your expedition's ability, you do not discard the card. The expedition card stays with the hand and will get passed with the rest of the structure cards. You could choose to park a rover. Let's say that Marty wanted to build this rover bay here. Now, it's got no cost, but it has got a requirement of this transportation flag, which Marty does not have. He just has the housing flag. Over here, I have got the transportation flag there, is park a rover over onto my flag card and now for this turn only he does have that requirement and can construct the card if he was short on resources he could place a rover on one of my production icons and gain those resources from that card as well you can only park rovers on other players cards there can only be one rover on each space and they're going to clear out at the end of each era beware though because once you've placed a rover on someone else's card it no longer belongs to you and will go to that player at the end of the round. You can flip a structure, any pink buildings that you have got. Give you a bonus action you can use once per era by flipping the card. So this reservoir, you probably want to wait until you had earned more water, but you could choose to flip this as an optional action and score one heart per water token that you have, which at the moment for Marty would be one solitary heart. You can also claim a reputation card. In the middle of the table, we have the display of reputation cards that we are racing for because they give us hearts, points. We love hearts, but they will also give you special abilities. Sometimes at the time you claim the card, sometimes for the rest of the game. The reputation cards have a requirement on them. You're allowed to claim the card if you have met its requirement, but you can only claim one reputation card per turn, even if you've met the criteria for several of them. They have an effect, so ongoing abilities will apply for the rest of the game, like take a heart whenever you park a rover. In every production phase, gain an extra resource of your choice. Or well, they have when claimed abilities that are one-off things that you get as soon as you claim that reputation card. So if you happen to have six or more blue structure cards, including your base, that's one of the six, you could get a reputation for being dynamic. Claiming this card, getting three points at the end of the game, and at the time you claim this, be able to produce with all of your blue structure cards. They are in different categories, bronze, silver, and gold, and get progressively more difficult to do as you go up but the rewards can be more and more lucrative. Usually, you would be claiming bronze cards in era one, silver cards in era two, and gold cards in era three. So once we've had a turn and we have decided what to do, Marty built, I assimilated, we pass our hands, including the expedition card. They go to the player seated to the left. In a two-player game, that's just gonna be a swap, isn't it? But generally, you will pass clockwise. We would then play a new round, starting with the player who now has the first expedition card and keep going over and over until the only cards remaining in the player's hands are the expedition cards. In a two player game, we still pass, but the first player does not change for the entire round. This stops players from getting double turns. The player who goes second in the first era will go first in the next era. So when the expedition cards are the only cards left in our hands, pass the first expedition to the next player reminding them that they'll be first next round. The rest of the expedition cards can go back to their stack. Move all rovers from your structure cards back into your supply and flip back all of your flipped cards. Take the discard pile and shuffle the cards back into the current era's deck. Then we move on to the scoring phase. In the scoring phase, we are going to claim the hearts that are on the flag reward board, score for any hearts on cards in our settlements and reduce the value of X by one 
then we set up for the next era. So first of all, we check the flag rewards one at a time. So starting with industry, who has the most industry flags? That would be me with one to zero. So I would claim those three hearts. Then we come to science. Who has the most science? Well, we tie for science. So who gets the hearts? The player with the most rovers. So you have to watch who you give your rovers to. How important is it to get those flags and those resources? Because it's the tiebreaker for these all important flag rewards. If two or more players are tied for rovers as well, nobody gets the reward and the hearts stay where they are. Housing, it would be Marty's two to my one. Food would be one each. Again, Marty's got the rovers. And transportation, he got a lucky draw with this food truck later on thanks to his expedition card and took the lead in. A lot of those flag rewards, I got a decent amount of energy to swap for my charger. Just keeping me in it a little bit. Then you would score heart tokens that are on your cards. We didn't actually draw any this round, but say that Marty had that distiller that gets a heart on it for every food flag that you have. In the scoring phase, you take as many hearts from the supply as you have on all of your scoring cards. You do not remove them from the scoring cards. So the hearts on here are hopefully going to build up and build up. There's one heart on it at the moment, Marty would gain one to his supply. Then we need to reduce the excitement value. Take one of the hearts from the space below X, and that's going to reduce all of the effects in the game that interact with X. And then refill the flag rewards, depending on which era we're in. If it's the end of era one now, we put fours underneath the flags. If it is the end of era two and we're about to go into era three, we put five value hearts under the flags. That's why we stacked them here. If there are still hearts here because certain categories weren't won, you add the new hearts to them. At the end of era three scoring phase, the game is over. Add up all of your hearts and the player with the most hearts is the winner. If the scores are tied, the player with the most rovers is the winner. And if you're still tied, the player with the fewest reputation cards is the winner. Your score is based on all of the heart tokens you've earned throughout the game, plus any hearts that are printed on your grey structures and the hearts that are printed on your claimed reputation cards. You don't score any heart tokens that are placed on your structure cards anymore. They were scored in the scoring phase. And there we have it. That is how to play Moon. I hope that this has given you a good head start and that you're ready to jump into your first game. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to get them answered for you. I'm going to talk about the solo mode now. So if you are only here for multiplayer, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next game. But if you'd like to find out about solo, stick around. In the solo mode, you will be put up against an AI controlled corporation from Earth called GURPS, the generic universal robotic profit system. It might be worth playing the multiplayer game first before you dive into solo or at least having a game of era one just against yourself because the basic rules still apply to you. You have the AI player and they have their own special rules, but everything else still applies to you. To set up, just the same as you would in a two player game, removing the same cards as we did, but there are some extra to remove. There is the science club in the era two structure deck that has a two plus on it. We don't need the first expedition card in a solo game. There are a couple of expeditions to remove, bartering expedition from era two and sneaky expedition from era three. Both have the two plus on them, but we can reintroduce the three plus expedition cards we removed for the two player game. They are fine in the solo game. We do however need the solo mode deck and the player aid. So playing the game, the production phase for you is exactly the same. GURPS does not take part in the production phase. They never want resources and any they might gain in the game are just discarded. Then we have the construction phase. GURPS does not have a hand of cards. They play from their solo deck and we don't get a conventional hand either. We need to deal out four hands of six cards each and then deal an expedition card from the current era on top of each of those hands. They are considered numbered one, two, three, four, and they need to stay in this order. On a turn, you pick up a hand. For your first turn, you pick the leftmost. In future, you go from left to right. So just in case you need a reminder, you could just offset them a little bit, give them a little twist to show that they're done. But yes, you grab a hand and hey, here's your expedition card for the turn. Here's what you've got to choose from to build or assimilate. You play the game exactly the same as before. So you will build or assimilate, do any optional actions. Hey, I haven't uh, done an example of production. 
We know how production works, though. We saw the first part, didn't we? So we do the normal turn, and then GURPS is going to play a solo card, and they place it just the same as we would in a multiplayer game. This is a production card, so it goes on this side, but they do not produce the resource. They don't care about resources. They do not want them. So GURPS does some micro mining, but there is a bit extra on here. So there is a black box that is going to give us some instructions to do. So this tells us that GURPS scores X hearts. We know in era one, X is three. So GURPS has scored three points for playing that card. There are also printed heart values on the cards. They are going to be added up at the end of the game and contribute towards GURPS's score. There are all sorts of other instructions on the cards, but a special one is called Adjust Vehicles. And this has to do with how many rovers we have relative to each other. So if Adjust Vehicles comes out, if we have the same number of rovers, GURPS gets a rover into their supply from the general supply. If GURPS has more rovers when this comes out, place a rover from their supply on a structure in your settlement matching the colour of the card they played. They played a blue card, so it would get placed in the topmost blue card that I have. If you happen to have more rovers when this comes out, place a rover from the general supply on a structure in GURPS' settlement following the colour of the card that they played. It'd be blue, so a rover from the supply would go there. Rovers in their supply and on their structure cards are taken into account when we count how many rovers that we have. And when they are parking rovers on cards, they always place on the topmost card of the relevant colour. So we've picked up a hand, we've had a normal turn, we have played a solo card and followed its instructions. You then return the hand to its place, keeping the same order, and carry on taking four turns. After that fourth turn is finished, we have the acquisition phase. And you would look at the last card played, so just imagine we've played four cards here, and look in the top left corner, it's got a little hand and a number. So this refers to hand four. We remove that hand from the game. It's gone. Remove a random reputation card from the game now. So if this is era one, we'd shuffle up the bronze and remove one of those. If it was era two, we'd shuffle up the silver and remove one of those. And if it was era three, we'd shuffle up the gold and remove one of those. After this, play three more turns. You will have seven turns in the solo game. And once you've had that seventh turn, we'll end the construction phase. Any structure cards left in the hands are returned to the current era stacks along with the discard pile. And we have a scoring phase, which largely works the same as the multiplayer game. GURPS is considered a player can win flags and claim hearts and potentially resources. But remember, if they claim resources, they're gone. They just get discarded. They don't want them. They do, however, love the hearts. At the end of the game, you win by having a higher total score than GURPS. GURPS' score is the number of hearts they've acquired through the game, plus all of the hearts printed on their cards. So if they had got 50 heart tokens and there were 50 hearts printed on the card, you would need to beat their score of 100 hearts. You can also play a more challenging hard mode. In this, draw an extra card in the acquisition phase and follow the number on that. So it says hand three. We would also remove hand three in the acquisition phase and only have two more turns. So a whole turn would be removed in each era. If the same number would come out twice, you'd just follow along. So if four had come out again, we would cycle back to one. If one had come out twice, we would take away two instead the second time. So you can make the game even harder for yourself in that way. Good luck against GURPS. I hope this has given you a good start in your solo moon missions. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to get them answered. There are hundreds more videos on this channel. If you would like to see more from me, you can subscribe and stuff if you'd like to. There are in fact more videos for all of the games in this trilogy at the moment, whether that's villagers, streets or moon. The asterisk that the current playthrough for moon was of a prototype. Things may have tweaked since then. But above all, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in your games of moon and I will see you for the next game. Bye everyone.